Okay, my friends, I started off the day looking into bacteria and the enzymes it creates and any studies they have done about radiation and other, other things that damage either the bacteria itself or damage the product that it creates, which is an enzyme, which is so elegant. This is so elegant, it's unbelievable. However, it is designed specifically to do a job in the body. And it does a job instantly. It would take up to a million years in a lot of cases to do what this does in less than a second. And if you break any of these bonds, you have damage. Ionizing radiation causes these possibly to be damaged. And secondly, it appears to kill the bacteria as well. All right, before we get into this, bacteria are the factories that produce the enzymes in our bodies. If somebody says to you, oh, no, no, that's done in the pituitary gland or whatever, some specific bacteria. No, it is, I mean, uh, enzyme, no. There's, a, there's bacteria that live there that create that specific enzyme, yes. But that organ does not produce it. Bacteria are the factories that produce enzymes. So we got to start with that. Now here's another little one here. Microbes versus enzymes. Enzymes are the chemicals, are the chemistry set that are produced by the microbes, which are the little bacteria. And they're produced to digest organic matter and to create immunities too. Microbes are living enzyme factories. Every different strain of, enz of bacteria creates its own little type of particle. And there's at least 75,000 different types of bacteria that they know about now, which is enzymes. See this? They're saying there's tens of thousands of enzymes in the human body. There's around 75,000, they claim. And each one catalyzes as an enzyme. Thousands of specific biochemical reactions a second. Over 5,000 types of reactions that they actually know about, but I'm telling you, there's many more than that. They grouped into six main classes, and then it goes on and on and on. And on. But this is the key. If you don't have the, the bacteria, you're not going to get the enzyme. If you don't have the enzyme, and that's broken because of, of ionization, that enzyme is just not going to work. It's going to be called what's denatured. It doesn't do its natural job at that point. Okay, my friends, this is really, really important. This is a single cell bacteria. These are ribosomes. They squirt them out continuously, and they're a, a certain exact program, and I mean exact. Now, that ribosome is as small as you can possibly imagine. This is a single animal cell, human cell. Inside this cell, one cell, there can be millions of ribosomes. All right, so here we are talking about one single cell, of, and you have billions and trillions of them in your body. Inside this cell, inside the fluid that's inside there are these ribosomes and they're just everywhere and when I say everywhere there is a, there can be millions in one single cell millions of ribosomes of those tiny little balls primarily they collect on this rough endoplasmic reticulum which is here which is the gateway to the DNA Basically, it looks like to me, because this is where your DNA in a nucleolus is, is stored. So, inside of here, you have millions of these little ribosomes. Ribosomes are chemistry sets. They're little tiny chemistry sets, and out pops an enzyme. And I'm showing you, I believe the enzymes are being damaged, because all you got to do is knock off one electron, and you're done. Now, I'm just saying this should be looked into. This is the National Library of Medicine. 
the effects of ionizing radiation on gut microbiota? And they say yes, it causes dysbiosis. Okay, my friends, this is somewhat tricky. This is the National Library of Medicine, and they're talking about the effects of ionizing radiation on gut microbiota, which is your digestive system. Now, they found that it's an issue, and it creates dysbiosis. Now, say, they say dysbiosis has been associated with a wide variety of patho patho pathologies, including gastrointestinal and non-gastrointestinal diseases, basically anything disease. Ionizing radiation consists of energy capable of detaching electrons from atoms or molecules, thus ionizing them. When you detach an electron, you change the molecular formula, basically. And these things are very, very sophisticated. So, did we kill the bacteria so it can't create the, the molecule, or did we break the molecule? I think we could do both. Ionizing radiation appears to do both. This is just from the study. This is not me talking. He said, and another consistent finding was the decreased relative abundance of Fasciolobacter bacterium genus after exposure. This species, Faxerium presenticis, previously known as Fuscobacterium, whatever, is one of the most abundant bacteria of the healthy human gut microbiome and is one of the most essential bacteria that produce butyrate and other short chain fatty acids. Its depletion has been arguably associated with inflammatory bowel disease. If you don't have enough of it, you have inflammatory bowel disease. Now, this another no noteworthy finding was an increase in relative abundance of the bacteria from the Fuscobacteria phylum, which are known to be associated with extensive spectrum of infections. They need to really, really look into this deeply. This is kind of concerning, to God, be honest with you. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this, but these are the ribosomes, little blue balls being shot out of here. They just go around the body everywhere and they collect a lot of them inside of cells. Millions in there at the same time, even with all the other stuff that's in there. When they're needed, they open up, unsheath, and turn into very sophisticated molecules like this. We can damage the bacteria and kill it. We could break the enzyme. I think both have the same, both are happening at the same time. That's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong, but I, I would like to see some research done on that. Because they, they're, all they're doing is just a general fecal swab. And that's, that, this should be very simple to do the research. I, I really can't believe that it hasn't been done at this point, especially with kids with autism and all that kind of stuff. They all, they all have, well, I wouldn't say all, but 99% of them, I would say, have some kind of a gut distress issue. And it's, they're not creating the correct enzymes because they, they don't have the correct bacteria in their gut. Basically, it's, it's not a big, hard thing to figure out. And they, they just need to do more studies. Every one of these papers I read, the last statement is, more studies are needed. Well, let's do them. Thank you.